Morning folks, welcome back to another video. Uh, join me in the dining room. I'm sat down, which usually implies it's going to be a chatty one, but it's going to be a little, just a shorty this one. Done quite a lot of long videos lately, haven't I? So just a little shorty. Uh, I just want to say like massive thanks for tuning in again. I, I know I rabbit on about this all the time, but I am massively appreciative of you all taking the time to watch this video and all the comments and stuff have, have been awesome. Uh, do find us on Insta and Facebook if you haven't already. You know the score. I say this every time, don't I? Click the like button and the subscribe and all that. Windy out there today. Um, I've shut the curtains because I really struggle with the light in here, uh, especially when it's like cloudy and then sunny and then cloudy. You'll have seen in the videos. I try really hard to get the lighting right, but I really struggle with that one. So I'm trying to trying to help myself out. We'll see if it makes any difference at all. Today's video is going to be on some of my uh, top bits of kit for like working in the mountains and it's kind of a, a mountain leader type one so right it's not climbing kit it's just general sort of mountain kit that I might take with me um, when I'm running an ML course or doing some scrambling stuff but not like the rope side of things just the just the mountain stuff um, so what we've got to do first is collect up those bits of kit because my house is kind of there's kit everywhere there's kit in the cupboard there's kit on the shelves behind me there's kit upstairs so join me on a quick little tour of the house to pick up these bits of kit and then we'll have a brief chat about them all right so i haven't done one of these like walk and talk things before feels a bit weird wandering around the house um pointing the camera stuff like that that's lynn hill's signature there on a little poster bit of a climbing legend Peace plant, it's doing all right that. Got a bit ill the last couple of weeks, but I think we fixed it. Picture of a place I stayed in Spain. Pretty place in Chile, really like it. I just like the colors in that photo. Uh, anyway, here's uh, kit room number one. And let's just pick up the bits of kit off here. That's definitely one of them. Uh, loads of stuff here, some rock shoes, lens boxes, bits of kit that haven't quite made it onto the rack or they've been retired off the rack all sorts of stuff up there oh look at that some ropes that haven't made it into service yet i love these boots these things they haven't made it onto the list of top kit they're more of a winter thing but I really like them ropes so i say loads of tents under there that's made the list definitely uh where there's one more thing up here i wanted to get two more things that and reaching there for that right that's it for up here it looks like this is staged now with like ice axes on the spare bed. It genuinely is. And I'm not quite sure why they've ended up there, um, but ended up there they have. All right, wander downstairs again. Try to fall down. This is quite tricky, this. Mind the old camera tripod. Got some more bits to pick up. Knocked the tripod over. Let's leave those bits there for the moment. Uh, off the shelves, there's two things I want here. One is, where is he? Let's see if we can find it. There it is, that's one chuck that on the pile uh, other thing is that get that on there uh, right into the kitchen we have to go around this light I do actually take this quite seriously all this filming stuff believe it or not in the kitchen which is massively bright let's try and change that a little bit wrong way there we go uh, we've got that pretty good bit of kit or oh, the massive amount of jackets there's all sorts in here nearly all Patagonia stuff uh, loads and loads of it. The one I want is that bad boy though. Oh, dog's come to join us. See him, he thinks it's time to go out in the strolling times. Move that light out the way again. Get around it. Uh, there's one more place to get kit from, and that is in the actual store cupboard. Which is tricky to get into. Again, move the lights out the way. This is like a little Aladdin's cave of stuff. Climbing kit shelves more of climbing kit slings that haven't been out of the packet yet what's all that up up there that's bits that just haven't really got another home gree grease and all sorts rock shoes galore loads here uh one two three four five six pairs of rock shoes they all have their use there's more upstairs as well and we've got brand new rock shoes as well that haven't made it into use yet these are the bad boys i want to know it's a bit dark down there i think there's one more thing in here that oh yeah that's what it is uh, let's just chuck these on the floor for now that bad boy right i think we're good right here we are folks sat down back at the table made a change to go wandering around the house just thought it'd be a bit different from staring at the camera for the entire video i'm going to rattle through these quite quick right 
Um, you will have seen some of them as I, I picked them up, but I'm only going to give a brief overview of each thing that I collected along the way. Uh, I'll start from what I've got in the kitchen. Nalgene bottles, these are great. Pretty much indestructible uh, and a nice wide neck, so nice to drink from. I kind of I just like that. And nice to collect water from streams, whether you purify it or not, you've got to collect it at some point. And it's just a lot easier when it's nice and wide. You can kind of see in and check there's nothing swimming around in that as well. Uh, I've got like various sizes, you usually take the sort of one litre one. These are quite good in the winter. I just fill these up with like hot water and put juice or whatever in it. And they, they're not insulated in the slightest, but wrap it in a jacket or something and they stay at least warm for a while and it's just nice and drinking freezing cold water. Because I mentioned jacket, let's pick the jacket up. I love this bit of kit. Anyone that knows me, um, you know, or from these videos and stuff as well, will know I love Patagonia stuff. I like fully bought into the whole company's ethics and everything like that. Not without their faults, of course, but you know, it's, it's a business, so who is? But, you know, recycled materials, it lasts a long time. They repair stuff free of charge and all that kind of thing. You can repair your own stuff with a bit of tape like that as well. I think I caught on a bramble in Spain this winter. This thing though, the micro puff, I don't know the weight or anything like that, but it's nice and light and warm for the weight. Not many days I go out on the hill without that, whatever the weather really, it's just a nice insulating layer. Uh, so, you know, summer months, that might be a thing you chuck on at like uh, lunch stops and things like that. Winter months, it might be something I wear sort of all the time. Um, it comes to Spain with me, comes to the shops with me, it just, it's just come everywhere with me. I really like that, probably needs a wash, probably a bit stinking by now. But yeah, I really like that a lot. Um, what we get? What else we got? All right, Summit uh, Super Light Bothy Bag Group Shell Tool. I see that catch there. I've gone on about these before in videos. Light. Look at it compared to this half a litre thing. You know, similar size. I can't. Again, I don't know the weight of it off the top of my head, but it's not a lot. These are you know just have to have them if you're working a group shelter of some sort, uh, and if you're just you know out for fun, they're just a, a useful thing to have, right? And let's say lunch stops or emergencies worth their weight in gold for sure they are summit super light force it's a four person one this one not the most waterproof of group shelters but i reckon good enough okay for emergencies and those quick stops so i'm happy to take that i really like them um i'll link some of this stuff below where i can some of the things you can get all from one place things like that you have to order directly from the manufacturer i've mentioned these in other videos the led lenses uh, it's an SEO 7. I flip and love these mostly because, right, it's lasted a long time. It's a torch, it shines bright light and it's brighter than most. It focuses, it's got that uh, reactive lighting thing. The battery uh, is a rechargeable one, or you can put your own batteries in as well, and that's kind of key for me. But it just works and it still works. What more do you want? A bright torch that keeps on working. Brilliant. Uh, MSR pocket rocket for the camping stuff comes in this little case that sometimes I use sometimes I won't use depends what else is going in the bag I'm not sure of the price off the top of my head maybe I'll flash it up on the screen in the editing but it's something like 25 ish pounds these are flipping ace right you can get lighter things you can get more exciting things but it makes a good flame and boils water fast that's pretty much all I want from a stove I've got like uh, jet boil type stuff and other bits and pieces but this is the one I take, like invariably it's the one I take. It just does exactly what it says on the tin. It's light, and again, it's lasted flipping ages, so I love that, MSR Pocket Rocket. On the camping side of things still, ah, oh, the Thermares Neo Air. What a game changer. If like me, you remember those foam mats. Oh, I mean, they worked, yeah, and they, you know, they couldn't be punctured and stuff, but these are game changers, like properly thick when they're blown up has a little uh, fixing patch kit in the bottom as well, just in case it does pop. But it hasn't popped, I've had it years, and this comes on you know, every ML course with me. I've bivvied in the Alps with it on granite stuff, and it didn't pop then either, uh, miraculously. I store it in this little dry bag thing because I've long ago lost the actual stuff sack that came with it. But those are flipping ace. Yeah, there's other brand type things available, but uh, again, the Thermarest ones have a lifetime warranty on them, so that's pretty good, isn't it? So if something does go wrong with it, they'll replace or fix or whatever for you. So yeah, Thermarest Neo Air, love it. Comfy night's sleep, getting old, that matters to me. A sort of camping thing, but actually this comes with me on most days out because uh, it's a bit of a lifesaver, really. It's just a battery pack, that's all it is, pretty boring. It's an anchor one, size-wise, you can see it's a bit smaller than my iPhone. Get like three charges out of it, something like that. 
and it just works and you know for camping yeah you need to have your phone charged up because you know modern smartphones you know, don't last forever do they uh, in terms of battery life just a simple thing that nearly always goes in my rucksack get that out of the way what else we got not the phone maps i flipping love this map you get these for various different areas obviously but this these are the harvey's maps one to 40 scale printed on waterproof paper light and surprisingly tough and i say surprisingly because just because they're so thin and light but this is this is years old this thing and there's not a day really that oh, i'm out on the hill and this doesn't come with me just sort of lives in the bag really it's starting to wear on those little joins and the creases but i'm not surprised it's been abused uh, often gets stored away a bit damp you can hear it unsticking itself there as well and it just seems to cope with it just fine so this could be the year it gets replaced but what i'll do is i'll just cut out the good sections and i'll keep using those um so yeah the bmc maps bmc harvey's maps joint thing absolutely mega love them what else we got left a couple of things this jacket's another patagonia thing right um well, you've got to have a good waterproof haven't you we live in the uk and i know that while we've had this lockdown period the weather has been ridiculously good and i don't think i've put a waterproof on once uh, when i've been dog walking and stuff uh you've, we've got to have them and i've got various different waterproofs but this thing is great it's actually it's cut a bit longer than a lot of modern jackets a lot of modern waterproofs are like cut in a climbing style nice and short so it doesn't get in the way and that's uh, that can be nice but actually when you're walking you just want something a little bit longer i'm not, I'm not down by my knees or anything but it just it actually you don't get that annoying gap between your trousers and, and jacket so much with this one it's a little bit stretchy as well which is cool it's, it's a patagonia galvanized and uh I just wanted to mention it as well because one I really like this jacket but it's the fabric as well it's the H2 No that's their own brand fabric I've had as much success with that fabric as I have with Gore-Tex stuff um, so I, I was mega impressed when I first bought this one I thought I'd bought a Gore-Tex one and then when it came it wasn't Gore-Tex so to be honest I was a little bit disappointed um, but it's been ace really like it the only thing I don't like are the toggle thing on they just don't grip uh, there's others inside as well Dip that down there you crank them really tight and it's it's snug for about five seconds but then they stop so you have to tie a little knot in them and stuff which is a bit annoying but otherwise it's a flipping brilliant jacket i really like that next bit of kit so the last bit of kit this one sad times i told you it's only a quick video oh these bad boys uh la sportiva um trango gore-tex something something it's got they've got a ridiculously long name but it's the green ones or the blue ones i think you can get them in red sometimes as well uh but they look like that and these are just a great mountain boot okay i mentioned in other videos that i, I wear trainers a lot in the hills you know approach shoe type things but if i'm going out and it's wet i'm not going to wear trainers because you just get wet feet these are, are great you can be plodding through bogs and all sorts and my feet stay dry they're a good mountain boot because uh, they've got kind of the rand around them. They're pretty stiff, right? So that's really good for edging. They're not the lightest of lightweight boots by any stretch, but they're not super he heavy either. Um, and yeah, they are a bit stiff and you might think that's uncomfortable, but I guess I'm just used to wearing boots like so regularly that they feel like trainers, they just fit me. And that's key really. If these things fit you, great. They're, I think they're brilliant boots. If they don't fit you, I'll well, just go and find a pair that, that do and if you've ever had to put up with boots that don't fit you you'll know it's horrible and the revelation of finding boots that just feel like trainers on your feet is brilliant so I've, I've had a few pairs of these over the years I found they last pretty well but I have a few pairs of all sorts of boots so they don't get hammered all the time uh, mod, the soles are really sticky and that's great or I think they're really sticky anyway but because they're sticky they don't always last quite so long uh, some people have found but i for me these have lasted quite well already uh, and i'll just i'll get another pair of these when they die as well they're often on, on sale so yeah i'm a massive fan of these hey there's loads of other bits i could have talked about and there is one more i'm going to talk about actually because a little bargain and a good little toy so bear with me one second yeah i, for, I forgot to pick this one up a second ago and I mentioned this, I haven't had it long, I only got it uh, earlier this year, but it's only £12 or something, it's a little anemometer. And for those of you that are just watching this from a, a purely what do I use kind of um, video and don't work in the outdoors, 
is this of any interest? Well, maybe it is. It is quite interesting to know what those winds are when you're putting on Facebook. Oh, we're out in these 60 mile an hour winds or something. Uh, it's nice to actually know what the speed was and get a little selfie with it when it's blowing 62 or whatever. But actually, from a teaching point of view, it's really good because it's quite hard to estimate wind speed if you're not out in it a lot. I, I find myself relatively good at it. But it's great to say, oh, what, what wind speed do you reckon this is? And people go, oh, maybe 30, somewhere. Oh, maybe it's 50. Oh, it's brutal. I feel like 70 miles an hour. And you can go put that up and go, oh, look, it's 22 or whatever it might be, you know. Um, and for the sake of 12-ish pounds that that costs, I think they're well good to have on the top of your rucksack. Nice lightweight bit of kit. I hope that was useful. Um, like I say, it wasn't intended to be like uh, a proper thorough review of all those bits and pieces. It was just a few things that I love to have in my bag and bits of kit that I really like. Um, yeah, let me know what your favourite bits of kit are that you put in in your rucksack. Um, there's loads of things I could have written about, was written about. I'm still in old blogging mode. This blogging type stuff is just so uh, new to me that I get my terminology wrong still feeling old when I say stuff like that. But yeah, there's loads of things I could have spoken about and loads of bits of kit I could have grabbed off the shelf. Uh, my, my walking sticks, my black diamond walking poles, I love those. My Patagonia rucksack, love that. I could just rattle on for another half an hour about all the kit I love. Um, please do fire away with any questions. As always, always happy to answer as best I can. You know that. Find us on Insta, find us on Facebook. Click that like button, smash the subscribe button. Hope you've enjoyed this video. More videos coming up very soon.